Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and I do run this channel for quite a while now and people have been asking me ever since if I could do an updated video on my settings. Now I'll be happy to do that in today's video, especially since I've recently been forced to redo all my settings after I got myself an HDR monitor, played around uh, quite a bit with HDR and then ultimately destroyed all my settings and had to redo everything after installing the NVIDIA app, which automatically deleted all my settings. Okay, so here we are. I've just had to play with my settings again, so let's go ahead and have a look. First of all, I'm sure you all are fairly familiar with what my simulator looks like from my videos, so this is pretty much the um, visuals that you guys can expect to see with these kind of settings. So let's go ahead and get right into it. And I basically run a setting that is mostly the default ultra. And this is what it looks like. So I did turn HDR off once again, just because it's incredibly hard to record with HDR these days and I just couldn't figure it out. So I am using a non HDR recording once again. Now I do run a 3840 times 2160 resolution on my 4K monitor. And for the anti-aliasing, I'm using temporal anti-aliasing. That's quite important because it means that the screens inside my flight deck are readable well. So if I'm zooming all the way in, you can see everything is totally sharp over here, while in other <clears throat> anti-aliasing settings, they can become blurry. So that's definitely something that I have changed from the default settings. Now, going along then, I do run a render scaling at 100. I'm using NVIDIA DLSS for my frame generation with the RTX 4090. And now let's get to the really interesting things. Um, stuff like the frame rate limit are done through the NVIDIA control panel, where I've set a frame rate limit of 115, now that I'm using a 120 hertz monitor. So just use a slightly below maximum setting. Now, dynamic settings are off at the moment. However, I do like to turn dynamic settings on for when I'm recording videos in complex environments. Basically, turning the dynamic settings on doesn't really impact my visual quality under most circumstances, since I usually get the frames that I want to get. Now, what it does is that when you fly into an exceptionally dense area, or one that's just a lot more demanding than your usual airports, for which I would recommend to optimize the settings, then the dynamic settings are going to automatically lower your graphics until you reach the desired frame rate. So in my case, that is a target at 115 now. But as mentioned, I would kind of turn it off because I do like to set my settings down here through the advanced settings. Now going into the advanced settings, train level of detail is one that I have at 200 at the moment. I'm experimenting a little bit with turning it up to 400, sometimes turning it back a little bit, but anything below 200 and the scenery just doesn't look good anymore. So if we reduce this one here down to something like 95 or 100 or so, then you'll see that if we just, you know, look somewhere where the train hasn't loaded, you get that really visible edge over there of where there is no um, 3D terrain anymore. And that's something that I really don't like. I think 200 is a very good compromise there between visuals and performance since 400 can really go onto your performance. Now, the rest of my settings are mostly the standard ultra layout with a few exceptions. One of them is the off-screen terrain pre-caching that with the standard ultra setting would just be in high, but I've increased it to actual ultra so that most terrain gets preloaded off my actual screen and that makes it a little bit less laggy when looking around quickly. So if you get lots of micro stutters when looking left or right, then this is probably the setting you want to change. Now I have 64 gigabytes of RAM that enables me to use Ultra over here, but I would just recommend to play around with this one and find a good setting that suits you. 
Now, a lot of the stuff down here is just standard ultra, as I've mentioned. I did increase the shadow maps on terrain shadows to 2k each. And one thing that I did do is set the texture resolution to high. I used to have this on ultra for a long time, but I've reduced this one to high now that in FS2024 we get a lot of developers who just really punch into your VRAM. Think about the A350 or the A380 that have a huge VRAM load. Then you've got sceneries like Aerosoft's Dusseldorf, which again has an incredibly high VRAM load, and combined with the GSX, which is also rather intensive, that can just exceed the 24 gigs of VRAM of my RTX 4090. For this reason, I went to high down here. That gives me a little bit more of a margin. For example, right now, while I'm recording this, I'm using 20 gigs of VRAM of the 24 gigs available. But obviously, I'm not near an airport right now. So that would have a difference. For the majority of settings down here, I can very much recommend to have a look into a guide available on the Microsoft Flight Simulator forums that tells you exactly how large the changes of things like buildings, trees, plants, etc. are. I'm going to link that one in the video description below so that you can read it up. Now, one more change to the standard ultra settings that I've done is the traffic. So I've turned off the uh, traffic airport quality and the air traffic because I want to use FS LTL for my visuals or for my parked and flying aircraft. And I've also slightly reduced the road traffic, sea traffic and fauna just because it reduces my VRAM load a little bit and because I started to run into issues there with Dusseldorf and the A3 and A380. So I used to have these all on Ultra down here, but I've just recently turned them down slightly because it would relieve a little bit of VRAM. Apart from that, I'm not using any graphic mods, so no shader mods, no Atmos or anything the likes. In my experience, they just don't give very good uh, results. And I much rather just use the default simulator visuals here, which are actually looking pretty, pretty decent. Every time I'm reading of someone in the comments who tells me well i'm using so many mods and still it doesn't look as good as what you are using i kind of have to smile a little bit and i just reply yeah i'm not using any mods that's probably the reason why because a lot of the mods can give you awesome visuals under certain situations but under the majority of other situations it, they are actually going to worsen your graphics quality so all those shader mods and things, yeah, they do have their advantages under certain situations, but I couldn't find any that made the sim generally look better. The only thing that really made it look better is HDR, and I did talk about that one in my video when I bought my um, new OLED TV. So do have a look over there for a little bit of words on um, HDR. But in general, I think that in terms of shaders and in terms of the color mixes that Asobo have done for the simulator, they've actually done pretty well and I don't see any reason to use any mods there. In my opinion, no mod has really made it look good. The majority of mods just made it better under certain situations, but under the majority of situations actually made it worse. Well, and that's my graphic settings. So it's a standard ultra preset, slightly modified. Again, if we just go over the changes that I've done, standard ultra, but with anti-aliasing in TAA, very important in order to be able to read your graphics correctly. Then dynamic settings, I do actually recommend to use this one, even though I have it off at the moment, but I would absolutely recommend to use it so that if you fly into some more complex airport, then you see it in action. And actually you've seen it in action on the majority of my past videos. And then in the uh, global render settings down here, train level of detail, I do recommend 200 as it is a very good compromise. Of course, assuming your hardware can run it, otherwise that's something that you can use. And then the rest of it pretty much ultra with the traffic turned off and the uh, road C and fauna set to high. Well, and that's the majority of my settings down here. I do hope you found that one interesting. Be sure to leave your feedback in the comments underneath. And a last tip that I can give you is one that you can really make use of if you don't have fast internet. That is 
turn your photogrammetry off and especially with slow internet it's really going to increase the performance of the simulator for instance over here in Düsseldorf I have turned it off and it gave me some 20 frames additionally now that's because at the place where I am recording this right now my upload is just really bad my download isn't that good either it's like 20 mbit downloads to 8 mbit upload right now so the sim runs fine but without photogrammetry it runs a lot smoother and to be honest it doesn't make that much of a difference visually either because the sim just looks incredibly awesome by default already at least for airliner flying for flying vfr things would be different but for anything you do in an airliner at 250 knots below 10,000, it's not making that much of a difference well my friends that's everything i have to offer for today's video let me know your settings let me know what you think can be improved a little bit there i'm pretty happy with the settings the way they are right now but obviously if things change i am going to update you guys so be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe and if you really love what I'm doing on the channel, would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one.